special joint meeting of the Peabody School Committee and the Welch School Building Committee. This joint meeting is being held so that members of both groups can become uh, not only informed of the progress of this project, but also to take some very important votes. So we're going to call the meeting to order at 6.41 this evening. I thank you all for your patience. We had some technical difficulties, but everything seems to be fine, and we're going to move right along. Um, right now, we're going to have a moment of silence, and then we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join us. Thank you. Now the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Because this is also a remote meeting, as well as taking place in, in person, we're going to call the roll of all the members of the two groups who are here present this evening. So right now, here at the Higgins Middle School Library, um, I'm Beverly Griffin Dunn. I have Mayor Ted Betancourt, Superintendent Josh Vidala, School Committee Member Jared Hawkman, School Committee Member Andrew Arnotis, School Committee Member Joe Amico, School Committee Member John Olympio, Welch School Building Committee Members Dan Doucette, Ryan Melville, City Councilor, Pete McGinn, City Councilor, Joe Scanlon, our Business Manager, Dr. Kelly Chase, our Assistant Superintendent, and then we have members of our Building Committee team. I have Mike Burton, Christina Delangelo from Doran Whittier, we have Vivian Lowe, and Donna Danisco from Danisco Design. Now, online, Christina, I'm gonna ask for your help if you can tell us who's present online. So currently online, we have Beth McGivern, uh, Jen Dort, Michelle Massa, and those are all SBC members. And then we have Christy Lyons from Consigli Construction. Okay, very good. All right, I'm gonna turn it over for a minute to Mayor Betancourt. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Dunn. Um, I just want to thank you uh, on behalf of the committee and um, the Welch School community for being the chair of this committee. Uh, this has uh, been a um, great deal of work that's taking place over the last several months, um, even I think we're over a year now, and um, you've been doing a terrific job. Very, uh, very appreciative of your efforts. And I just wanted to thank all of our committee members, uh, all of the people that have taken part in this. We're we're making big progress, great progress, and I know this is a big day for us, an important vote for us to take, and looking forward to continuing our efforts here, and we're gonna be able to do something special at the Welch School. So happy to be a part of this, and looking forward to the next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. All right, now we'll get to the exciting part. I'm gonna turn it over to our owners project management team, and they're going to lead us through the presentation. What you're going to see is really one of our typical school building committee meeting agendas. And then when we get to the vote, we will at that time have you know two, two separate roll calls, but uh, th this is the good stuff. So go right ahead, Christina and Mike. Uh, why don't we go ahead and approve the meeting minutes from our last meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, from the members, oh, and I'm gonna say Mr. Hockman is also a member of the school building committee. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve the school building committee minutes of the July 8th meeting. So moved. Okay, motion by Mr. Hockman. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second from Dr. Vidala. Any discussion on those minutes? Okay. Anyone opposed to those? Anyone abstaining? All in favor? The minutes passed. Okay, thanks, Bev. So, Thank you. Uh, as in regards to the agenda, you can see on the screen behind me, uh, this is our typical agenda that we typically go through. And so, just to recap kind of what we're looking for for this evening is to go over with you a design update that reflects uh, what uh, Danisco will be submitting as far as our schematic design submission to the MSBA. We're gonna go through our work plan review and schedule, also with an approval uh, 
for us to submit uh, with our schematic design submission to MSBA. We're going to review our total project budget. Uh, we've gone over our uh, estimates with you as far as at the different milestones that we've gotten to uh, to this point today. And so we're going to review uh, what that total project budget looks like for our schematic design submission. We're going to go over our value engineering, uh, what it took for us to get back to our total project budget. And then ultimately, we're going to ask for votes in regards to uh, the total project budget itself, the schematic design submission to MSBA, as well as our local actions and approval letter. And so with that, we're going to start off with our design update. Vivian, go ahead. Great. Thank you. Can you hear me? Awesome. Oh. All right. So great to be here tonight with you all. This is such an exciting milestone for all of us to be at the schematic at the end of schematic design. Um, we just wanted to share some highlights of the schematic design package that we are going to be submitting to the MSBA in less than two weeks. Is he okay? So we'll look at site plans, the, the design of the building so far, some interior views. Uh, as um, Christina said, the schedule and the total project budget. Oops, how do you go forward? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. Why don't you control? Why don't you try? Yeah, you're better at that. Okay. So the Welch Elementary School project is a robust renovation project with a small addition at the front of the, the current main entrance. As such, there's no significant change to the site layout. So that's as the, the building stands now. Next. We are, however, um, making some, some minor uh, updates to the site, uh, primarily to meet the accessibility requirements. The site currently is not accessible. We will be regrading certain sidewalks, new curbing. Um, we're creating curb cuts where they need to go. We are changing the uh, accessible parking space locations so that we're moving them into the parking area. And then in the back of the school where the playground is, we are replacing the bituminous play area, as well as replacing the, the mulched area of the, uh, the playground where the playground equipment is, replacing that with a rubber surface. So it's, um, you're, when this is all said and done, the site won't look a whole lot different in terms of the layout. Circulation will pretty much stay the same in terms of cars and um, the few buses. The kids will continue to walk, enter the school, pretty much the way they do now. Next. The new building systems um, will be replaced. So, so the school, as you all may know, is um, fairly old, and the systems are all beyond their useful life. So we are replacing all the systems. There's going to be a new HVAC system, um, new plumbing within, um, as well as new electrical systems. We're also adding a sprinkler system. We're tying into the existing water main. Um, so this, this slide just shows the utility plan and it shows that we're not really doing much on the site in terms of the, the utilities, but we are tying into the existing utilities. Next. Oops, can you go back one? There you go, okay. So this is just a bird's eye view of the school. You'll see that um, it's looking at the school from the northwest corner. Uh, you'll see that the center portion of the school has a bit of equipment. So a large part of this project is, again, systems replacement. And so we actually need to replace and rejigger the structural um, uh, layout of the building in the center core so that we can support the rooftop equipment. So you'll see on this slide, there's a, a, a few little Piece. It looks kind of little, but they're good pieces of equipment that will provide air conditioning and um, heating to the school year-round. Next. Here's a view of the main elevation, the main entrance. So what we wanted to do is to create a visual um, statement saying, hey, here's the main entrance. So we have an opportunity to do that because we are redoing the structure in the center core. We're able to pop the roof up a little bit in that area, create a, a new entrance because that area that pops up is actually an addition. 
We're also replacing um, the windows, the existing window system. Next. And here's also a close-up view of the entrance. Um, using materials that are a little bit more modern. Um, the brick, there's, there's still quite a bit of brick on the building, but we're using materials that are complementary to the brick. Next. We are redesigning the actual window wall so that we are um, creating more walls with punched windows in conjunction with the window walls. There will be ample um, daylight that will get through to the classrooms much more than what's there now. Next. And we just want to share a few highlights of the plan. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a, a pretty robust renovation in terms of just um, systems uh, and whatever we need to do to improve the system. So when we do new electrical uh, systems, we, we're running new electrical cabling, uh, cable for technology, new lighting, we need to take the ceilings out to do all of that work. We're um, installing a sprinkler system, new fire alarm system. So the building is essentially getting all new ceilings, new flooring, new finishes in terms of paint and where we are reconfiguring some of the spaces, we're putting in new walls with new wall finishes. The most significant area of work is that center area. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, can you point to it? The center area where, yes, um, where we have the opportunity to change the location of some of the key program elements. So currently the existing admin area is in the center of the school. By doing the work that we're doing for the equipment on the roof, we're able to rejigger the interior and move the admin suite to the front of the building to provide you know, uh, some eyes on the road, a security point where folks coming in would enter into a vestibule and um, uh, have a couple of checkpoints. And we have some enlarged plans of that. Next. On the second floor, there's not a whole lot of um, changes except that on both floors, the current toilet rooms have prime um, spaces that have outdoor views. Well, actually, probably can't really see much of those windows, but they have um, exterior walls. So we're actually moving some of those, the toilet rooms inboard and providing um, spaces that actually have windows for program. We'll get to the library. <laughs> This is an enlarged plan of the new admin suite, which is where the entrance is. You'll see that there's a vestibule now that provides um, two-step security. Folks who are coming to visit will still check in with um, a, a monitor system, and those uh, the front office would then be able to let the folks in. And then once they're in the vestibule, it's similar to how I, I believe Hig Higgins is working, right? where um, you still need to check in once you're in the vestibule, and once you clear that checkpoint, you're allowed inside the building. It also just provides a set of eyes on the driveway, folks entering the site, and just um, anyone coming in. We're also able to move the nurses suite, as well as the trauma suite, closer to the front of the building, provide a, a secondary door to the outside, so um, for those kids who are um, ill and need to be um, picked up. They don't need to go through the building. They can just be picked up directly from the outside. Next. And the one piece that I forgot to mention earlier is the media center. So by moving the admin core out of that center area, we free up space to be able to enlarge the current library. This really gives us a, a wonderful space to provide um, uh, all sorts of learning opportunities. So we can create four zones where there is a circle time teaching zone. There are quiet spaces for one one on one learning. There's also a corner where we could have a green screen. So um, ample opportunity for different programmatic needs. And here are just a few views of the inside. So this is a view from the interior lobby once you walk in. And that corner is what you'll see to um, that's the library. You'll see through the windows uh, what's going on in the library. Here's a view down towards the gym. That little set of doors at the end are the gym doors. And that's the library to the left. And here is the interior media center <laughs> library. 
So we are also making improvements to the general classrooms in that we're providing new storage for students and teachers. And this is a view of the window wall. So where there currently is a whole wall of glass that is pretty opaque in some areas right now, we're able to create some wall space so folks can, uh, teachers could put up artwork and student work but also have ample amount of windows. And you'll see that it's not a full wall of windows, but there are some very tall windows on the side and two punched windows in the center. Next. So part of the MSBA um, submission is an, a work plan that we put together identifying all of the scope of work that takes us from design through construction. This project schedule is a part of that work plan and it outlines all of the, well not, not every intricate detail, but a lot of the milestones and some of the meetings that we anticipate will be required to get through these, these phases. So we are currently wrapping up schematic design, design development, oh, thank you. Um, we submit our package, which is a nice binder of information and drawings to the MSBA on the 8th. And then we plan to have a community meeting soon after that to catch everyone up after the summer. The MSBA Board of Directors meeting is scheduled for October 27th. At that point, they vote to approve this project. Um, and then the, um, the city then has a couple months to um, obtain funding approval. Design development really uh, starts in earnest after we submit the s schematic design package to MSBA. And so our design development, which is our next phase, ends in December when we submit that package to the MSBA. And then after that, we have um, about six months of construction documents, which is when we draw all the details needed to build the building. And that gets submitted in two phases to the MSBA, and then we go to bid. We have a uh, construction manager already on board, which is Consigli. Uh, Christy is on the call here. Um, we have been working with them to uh, have them review our drawings, um, review the existing building, discuss constructability, and they will uh, be issuing some, will issue some drawings for early release packages to get the project going. But really construction starts in earnest in the summer of next year. All right, so this takes us back to... Does anyone have any questions in regards to the work plan and schedule? Just wanted to ask if anyone had any questions about it. It's on that FTP link that I sent to you. It's something that we'll work with um, from, from today's date moving forward as far as outlining those important meetings and to ensure that everyone's aware kind of our milestones and, and upcoming schedule. Mr. Miko. Oh, sorry. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, say that construction starts in summer of 2022. How long are we looking at for construction, and will that interrupt the start of the school year? And how does that operate? And so <clears throat> the construction is uh, forecast to be around 16 months. So it will uh, happen during the school year. Um, we've come up with a phased approach. Um, so there's going to be some classrooms that are um, sent oh, throughout the district. Oh, I guess I can save up for the next time. Yeah, right. You got so, lost money from Odessa, 180 days. That's three months, isn't it? Can we be in Zoom bond again? I don't know. What happens with time? So it's going to be done in a phased approach. <clears throat> Does that answer your question? So ultimately for our MSBA schematic design submission, they do require us to obtain a vote from the SBC uh, for the uh, work plan as presented today. Do you want to do a motion? Is that from SBC only? It's for SBC only. Okay. So for the school building committee members present and online, could we have a motion? We'll entertain a motion from any one of the members to approve the work plan that has currently been presented. Motion by Ryan Melville. And do I hear a second? Oh, second by Pete McGinn. Thank you. Okay. And then I'm going to do a roll call vote. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, Mayor Betancourt. Yes. 
Okay. Dr. Vidala. Jared Hawkman? Yes. Okay. Pete McGinn? Yes. Ryan Melville? Yes. Michelle Massa? Yes. Thank you. Jen Dort? Yes. Okay. And Beth McGiven? Yes. Dr. Chase? Yes. Okay. And then is there anyone on the committee that I didn't call? Anyone online? Okay. All right, and I vote yes as well. So that motion has passed, and the work, work review is, is approved. Thank you. So, so this next section, um, we're not expecting anybody to be able to read this or <laughs> understand this. This is um, really more just showing you. This is called the 3011. Um, this is a tool that the MSBA used to calculate um, the reimbursement and ultimately the maximum grant. We are going to provide some highlights of this um, as we don't expect you to be able to read that. So if you go down, um, what's important to note about this, um, <clears throat> basically once we submit at this stage, we're making our agreement with the MSBA. Um, once they set the maximum grant amount, that number will never go up. So this is a very critical stage of the project, which is why we have two independent estimators. Um, the designers have an independent estimator, and then we have a construction manager on board. Both of them look at this in great detail um, and essentially come back with two, two numbers. Um, so the numbers that we did receive were a little bit over, and I'm going to talk about value management and what we did to get back to budget, but I'm happy to report that we are back to where we wanted to be, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. But just to kind of give you an uh, understanding of what's included in the 3011 before I get to these, these highlights, um, it includes the feasibility and schematic funding, which you've already appropriated uh, $1.2 million for. Um, it includes OPM and designer fees. It includes construction cost, uh, FF&E, technology, um, and some other miscellaneous costs. Uh, it's also important to note that uh, in this 3011, we've built in some contingencies to uh, basically protect the city. Uh, we have design contingency because, as Vivian said, they're going to be drawing right up until May. And until we go out to bid, we need to protect ourselves from that. So we have some design cont contingency built in. Um, we also have escalation contingency built in. We have owner contingency for when we're into con construction and, and oops, sorry, once we're into construction. And then there's also some soft cost contingency. So it's important for people to understand that as we go into this. Ultimately, both committees are going to be asked to vote to approve the total project budget, which is shown here on this slide. The total project budget is 29,973,821. And I also want to talk a little bit about the MSBA's reimbursement. Um, so out of the gates, um, based on what we have here, it's 63.33%. It's now, there are some ineligible items, and they, they take some certain things away, but as we ran the numbers, uh, we find that um, City of Peabody is going to receive approximately 58% paid for uh, by the MSBA, which is a huge, it's one of the highest uh, percentages I've seen on any job. Um, so that's important to note. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to see if anybody from the working group committee wanted to make any comments or this, or maybe I can go talk about VE first and then we can come back to. Yeah, if you, if you explain the VE and then yeah. go back to that, yeah. Okay. Um, so, oh, sorry, also wanted to add, so the building area that's calculated based on the 3011 is 59,025 square feet. Grade configuration remains the same, pre-K through five. Student enrollment is uh, 390 plus pre-K. Total construction cost is 23.348836. And as I said, total project budget is 29,973,821. Um, we are, even though it's a renovation project, we are uh, looking to achieve LEED certification, and we believe we are going to achieve silver. And those are just some stats. So uh, for value management, um, like, I like the 3011, um, we also set up a working group with many people in this room to go through. Um, basically, it's a list of ideas. Uh, when the estimates came in, they were a couple million over, uh, and it was clear that we needed to get back to budget, and with the items that are on this screen, um, we were able to do so. We tried to focus on items that didn't impact program, and really um, it was more you know, materials and, and things that weren't going to impact the day-to-day the -day, uh, school operation. So ultimately, with the help of the working group, uh, we were able to get back to budget, and that's what the 3011 is based upon. So. 
I know that we have some time constraints here, so I'm not expecting to go line by line. So I was hoping maybe a member of the working group committee could basically speak to it or possibly make a recommendation to vote to accept. Any member of um, Mayor Betancourt or Dan, would you like to say anything on, on how that value engineering worked? told you I'd get you on a microphone. Thank you. Uh, as with any project, there's things that we can add and there's things that we can take out, things that are related to building operations and things that relate to the operation of a school. Um, so if you looked at the entire list of which there were 40 items, I think, on the total list, um, there were some big ticket items that we um, looked at and, and quickly decided upon uh, savings. To give you a couple of examples, uh, the uh, gymnasium was scheduled to uh, be rated for air conditioning at 400 occupants. And that, build, that part of the building has never been used for that kind of a general uh, meeting. So that uh, saved on the order of about 40000 just on savings on HVAC costs. Uh, there were some other uh, items on the list, and I'm, I'm just going down uh, quickly. Uh, some of the exterior finishes were, were tweaked to make sure that we're not putting in high-end stuff, but things that are still durable and, and useful. Um, we're looking at... Uh, things like not using all new furniture but some reuse of furniture which impacts on the on the ff and e side of things um, cafeteria equipment will kind of take that out of the budget but think about that in the long term hopefully if we can buy some of that back or look at other places that we could fund that um, but the, the process involved all the major stakeholders including the design team the project manager, the people at Consigli, and then all of uh, those of us who've been working on Jim Hafey from the uh, facilities department. Uh, so it's a it's an iterative process that gets us down. I mean, there was a bit of a sticker shock at four million over, um, but the the strength of the team is that things were identified quickly, uh, costed out. Um, on the overall value numbers and we're down at a point where we think we can live within the one of the other things and it wasn't mentioned is that the msba since the start of the process raised the per square foot cost of the building allowed for reimbursement at 360 dollars a square foot that gave us incredible wiggle room compared to the uh, original number it was 320 i think it was yeah 323 so the MSBA has recognized that things ain't as cheap as they used to be, uh, and luckily we're the maybe one of the first beneficiaries beneficiaries of of getting that higher number, which added in about a million and a half dollars worth of additional reimbursable cost um, that softened the blow of a, of a building that was coming in over the magic number that the MSBA assigns to per square foot costs. Um, so. Uh, that whole combination of things gets us to the 12.4 million of, of city cost um, that, that will be borne over the life of the project. And um, there's even some opportunities beyond that. But in terms of the value management, it was a wonderful process and it worked out very well early on. So um, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, Dan. It really was an amazing process, the amount of work that went into getting that budget back down um, and the factors that occurred. Anyone knows the story about plywood. Expenses for construction have gone through the roof. So it really is a very, uh, very good process. Are there any questions? Any questions? Dr. Vidala. Bev, I'll just say very, very quickly, uh, you know, the, the process was wonderful through the direction of the mayor. We really talked about what we valued and what we needed in, in the building. And from the, you know, having Jim Hafey there, what was really safe and what we needed to be durable was kept and maintained. And from the educational perspective, we worked uh, with the team to make sure that the integrity of the educational program was set. And we're very comfortable with uh, the, the changes that they made. Thank you, Dr. Vidala. 
All right, uh, we, we're prepared to take the vote. Uh, there, are, there are two votes. I'm gonna do it for the building committee first. Um, this is to vote on the value engineering review and approval. So I'll entertain a motion from the building committee to approve the review process and the resulting uh, document that will be submitted. That's the um, 3011. Yep. All right, and I have, I have the language here. So uh, the motion would be to proceed with the schematic. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's the next vote. All right, this is to approve the value engineering uh, report. Motion by Mr. Melville, second. Mr. McGinn. All right, roll call vote. Mayor Betancourt. Yes. Dr. Vidala. Yes. Jared Hawkman. Yes. Pete McGinn. Yes. Ryan Melville. Yes. Militia Michelle Massa. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Jen Dort. Yes. Thank you. Beth McGivern. Yes. Okay. Any member I didn't call? Oh, Dr. Chase. Yes. Okay, thank you. That motion passes. And then the second vote would be to submit the schematic design to the MSBA. And I'll entertain a motion for that. So moved. Okay, thank you. Motion second. by Mr. Hockman. And second by Dr. Vidala. Okay. And that is just to submit the, the entire design. So we'll go back again. May bet and quit. Yes. Okay, Dr. Vidala. Yes. Pete, uh, okay, Michelle Massa. Yes. Oh, Pete McGinn. Yes. Thank you. Ryan Melville. Yes. Okay, thank you both. <laughs> um, Jen Dort. Yes. Okay, Beth McGivern. Yes. Okay, and I vote yes as well. And I voted yes on the other one. So that Be motion passes. Beverly. Thanks, May Bet and quit. Bev. Beverly, yes. I'll vote yes on that too. Oh, didn't I call you, Jared? No, no, that's okay. I'm sorry, that's Mr. Hockman. Yes. Well, yeah, okay, here I we go. I made the motion. All right, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, you made the motion. All right, now, the next vote that we need to take is of the school committee, and they need to vote on submitting the schematic design. Okay, this is the, and to approve the 3011. Okay. Yeah, Jared, if you would. I, Jared Hockman, make a motion to proceed with the schematic design with a total project budget of. Uh, twenty nine million nine seventy three eight twenty one. Twenty nine million nine hundred seventy three thousand eight hundred twenty one dollars, and to approve the thirty eleven sheet as presented on August twenty six, twenty twenty one, regarding the William A. Welch Elementary School project, recommended by the School Building Committee on August twenty six, twenty twenty one. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Anotis. Okay. All right, for the school committee, we will do a roll call vote. Mr. Miko. Yes. Mr. Olympio. Yes. Okay. Mr. Hockman. Yes. Mr. Anotis. Yes. Okay, and I vote yes as well. Okay, so that is the school committee approval of submission. Thank you. There are a lot of votes, lots of papers. I wanna make sure we get it all right. Did we get them all? Do we need one more? One more, okay. the local actions and approval letter. So oh, okay. uh, the local actions and approval letter is just an outline letter that explains all the SBC meetings that we've had since we submitted our uh, preferred schematic report. And it also outlines all the meetings that we had with the community to date. Uh, all the information has been uh, reviewed and has been um, presented to the school building committee as well as the school committee. Okay, thank you. This letter is, absolutely on point it even has tonight's meeting in there it lists all of the meetings all of the public meetings um we really have 
put a lot of time and effort into making sure that the public is completely informed of this and that we follow through on all the processes. So all of that information is contained in this letter. And um, if I could have a min if I could have a motion from the school committee. Uh, wait a minute. We just need SBC approval on the local school actions. School building approvals. committee. Yep. Sorry. Okay. So this is for school building committee to approve the submission of a letter to Mrs. Diane, Miss Diane Sullivan, um, outlining all of the reviews, all of the meetings that have taken place, all of the information um, votes and minutes that we have been taking throughout the schematic design process beginning in May. Actually, I'm sorry, December. Could I have a motion to approve the information and submit this letter? So moved. Okay, thank you. Motion by Mr. Hockman. And a second from school building committee. Second by Mr. Second by Dr. Vidala. Okay. Do we need a roll call on that one, or do you? I think, I think you can just roll. I think we do. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, Dr. Vidala. Okay, I vote yes. Mr. Hockman. Yes. Okay. Michelle Massa. Yes. Thank you, Jen Dort. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see, Beth McGiven. Yes. And Dr. Chase. Yes. Okay. Anyone in opposition to that? None. So that motion passes as well. The votes take the longest. <laughs> uh, so that's everything that we had for tonight's meeting as far as agenda topics. And so uh, if you just, uh, any other topics not reasonably anticipated? I don't know. Does anyone have any, any questions, especially on the school committee? Um, as you know, the school building committee, we have been following right along with all of this. I know that uh, we do get an update every, every two weeks at school committee meetings, but um, being able to see the slides is a lot better than listening to my presentation. <laughs> and it really has been quite a process going through and finding out exactly how everything has to be done. Um, it is amazing and it's gonna be a great project when it's done really well. A lot of innovative things, a lot of uh, good thoughts. Okay. We're mo ready, ready to adjourn? I think we are. So motion to adjourn. Enjoy the evening, everybody. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you all very much.